cleaning. Cleaning the vehicle is the most important part of the car wrapping process. And the easiest way to get it clean, best first step, is to have the client wash the car the day before. Basic car wash. No bells and whistles, no wax, no bling bling on the wheels. Just straightforward car wash. How do you get them to wash the car? Well, just say that the cleaner the car, the better the investment. Or say if the car shows up and it's excessively dirty, there's going to be an extra charge. And always the day before because that allows the water to properly dry inside areas like around the license plate, back lights, all that kind of good stuff. If the wheels are shiny when the vehicle shows up, that means that they had a, you know, kind of some kind of like protectant put on them. And that protectant is always silicone based, oil based, and that'll spread along the whole side of the body. So just make sure you pay particular attention to cleaning that up, degreasing that area. And then always when the car shows up, first thing you do is actually for the cleaning process is check the graphics. No reason to clean and prep the car if the graphics are incorrect. So if you're doing full print, make sure all the graphics line up. If you're doing paint replacement, paint wraps, changing the color of the car, just make sure you have enough film. If you need 18 meters or yards, make sure you have 18 meters or yards. So again, once all the graphics are checked out, now you're ready to rock and roll. So before the vehicle comes in, it's always a good idea to sweep and or mop, okay? The cleaner the workspace, the cleaner the car. Less problems you're gonna have, okay? If you don't sweep before the car comes in, always try to sweep from under the car and work out. You never wanna sweep towards the car, always critical. In the winter time, there's always an electrostatic charge when you pull the backing paper off. And if the space is particularly has like a fine dust on the floor, that dust will jump onto the adhesive once you remove the backing paper. So if you can't mop, before you apply that panel, spray a nice mist onto the ground and that'll keep that dust from jumping up. Really critical, especially in the winter time. Because that dust from walking on traffic, you can see how much this vehicle was cleaned. And by the end of the day, the windows look like this. This is how much dust and dirt settles on the vehicle. Again, before cleaning, remove the hardware first. What's underneath hardware is dirt. So always take your time. Whatever hardware you're going to remove, remove that first. And be super thorough during this process. Nozzles, you know, underneath the side molding in particular is a huge amount of dirt. Look how much dirt's behind there, especially on older cars. Side lights have oil, dirt, all that kind of stuff on them. So again, always taking the time to remove the hardware is critical beforehand makes cleaning easier, but if you clean before and then take the hardware off, all that dirt's going to go back on the body, and if you miss it, either it goes underneath the film, or if you don't miss it, you have to clean the car twice. No, Not good. Always just want to clean the car once. Windshield wipers are good to remove because there's always a lot of dirt underneath those, especially if you're just changing the color of the car. Try to get underneath those wind, uh, windshield wipers for sure. And if you're removing any emblems, obviously take off the emblems. And if you're going to use an adhesive remover, just watch out for it dripping onto the rest of the car. Any kind of molding, lots of dirt underneath the molding. Super critical at all hardware. And this is the vehicle, the space was swept before, and this is how much dirt came off the vehicle after the hardware removal. So this is a particularly dirty car, but again, that's just a good indication of how much dirt is underneath the hardware. If the car does show up and it's wet, here's how to dry a wet car. And it's really important to dry a wet car because all that moisture is going to stay underneath the molding. One way to do it is by hand. What you want to do is you really want to dry deep inside the body of the car because a lot of water it stays inside there and that'll drip onto, the, especially onto the running board. And then we want to take your heat gun and heat any kind of area where it's really tight, like around door handles, molding, gaps between the bumper and the fenders and stuff like that. And then you want to take a paper towel and, so and the heat will expand any kind of water, make it fall out. Maybe open it up and slam doors. Take your squeegee and a paper towel. All sorts of techniques you need to get that area dry. It's really critical because if water gets underneath the film, it's not going to stick and there's nothing worse than, let's say, wrapping this door handle and then the edges are peeling back because of water. And only time you know that it's dry is if your paper towel is dry. I'm a huge fan of having a portable air compressor on site and air compressors are great for blowing out dirt and particularly water. So along headlights, you just blow them out any kind of molding. 
just get in there and just crank it out and the air compressor is super super good for this kind of stuff is it loud as hell absolutely so you want to throw in some earplugs before you do this just be super smart but around these areas where it's super tight really hard to get those dry with an air compressor super easy so again just blow that stuff out and just do a 360 around the car be super super thorough about this part because again dry car is a great car wet car not so fun and again a good tip again this is from my good friend mark the rap monkey he uh puts his air compressor on wheels so it can fall around the car super easy because mark is a smart rap monkey now once you get ready for the actual clean the car some extra focal points are especially wheel wells underneath the bumpers all edges door handles any kind of recessed area like on vans in particular wheel wells are always super dirty underneath the body is wildly dirty all the edges and especially in kind of recessed area you want to spend a lot of extra time cleaning those areas because it's tough for the material to stay in once you're ready to wrap you can use paper towels and if you use paper towels generally you get two sections of a paper towel and then fold it incrementally so you can really see what kind of how much dirt is coming off the car once one side is full you can flip it then you got a clean side and once that becomes full you can open up the paper towel and then do it again so again this is a really precise way of cleaning because cleaning should be precise you should get hundred percent of the application surface super clean and you can even use a microfiber towel I'm becoming a bigger bigger fan of microfiber towels in terms of cleaning and you want to fold the microfiber towel the exact same way if you are using hand towels or microfiber towels just make sure there's nothing in the fibers before you start going crazy on the car otherwise you might scratch the vehicle once you start cleaning always want to overlap your strokes and you want to clean open doors get all the edges and the first time you want to use generally there are some cleaners that you can general clean and degrease some cleaners you have to do a general clean then degrease and there's even some cleaners where you first degrease and then you general clean if you're using particularly hardcore cleaners you want to wear rubber heavy duty rubber gloves absolutely and try to minimize spraying heavy duty cleaners you want to pour it directly on the towel and for first getting the dirt off the car you always want to take a squeegee put it inside the paper towel or the microfiber towel and you want to dig it into areas where your finger can't reach around door handles front lights free floating windows and molding super critical to do the squeegee in the paper towel if you skip this step you're going to run into problems because these are the critical areas for the film to really hold onto the body and especially you're focusing on the body of the vehicle but what you really want to clean is the whole entire vehicle underneath the hood there's lots of leaves on the tires there's tons of sand and dirt this bumper is not being wrapped but you want to clean it because that dirt might jump from the bumper onto the car especially around the front section of the windshield there even the windshield you want to make super clean so be super thorough to clean the entire car and then once the car is clean you always want to do like a finger check and if your finger squeaks that's a good thing if it kind of glides and feels oily then you should go back and you should clean again and you always want to feel particularly inside wheel wells bumpers to get a super clean surface some people can use a use a clay bar or a scratchless sponge to kind of really buff the surface clean this is a really good move if, especially if you're changing the color of vehicle like with the exotic material like chrome and that kind of stuff you don't have any kind of uh, bumps or anything like that this is a scratchless sponge this is particularly good for kind of like older vehicles really good for recessed areas and again here's a good example of feeling inside the wheel well make sure it's super clean again be super thorough wheel wells underneath the body lots of oil and dirt there and want to make sure that's super clean super clean workspace is really critical for maintaining a vehicle again what's a good tip is you take the backing paper roll it up put it inside a trash bag and this becomes a nice canister for your material I never put backing paper in my trash bag I always put the backing paper directly underneath the vehicle so when the wrap is done I, at the end of the day I simply pull the car out and all the backing paper is on the floor because backing paper is bulky especially if you put it back in the trash can so by putting the backing paper on the floor then I can just pile it up nice and easy in 
one big pile and then I just roll it up in one shot. So for me all my scraps, all my vinyl goes in the trash can and then my backing paper I just roll up in a nice compact tight pile right there and then I throw it directly in the trash and generally for me at the end of the day I always sweep at the end of the day once the car is out because that just helps it either you know show up the next morning and I don't have to sweep but I always want to make sure my workspace is super clean. And now the wrap up. And again the best sequential order for cleaning the vehicle is again taking the car to a car wash the day before before the vehicle comes in sweep and or mop check the graphics before you start on anything no reason to clean and prep the car if the graphics or you don't are incorrect or if you don't have enough film do the hardware removals before you do anything on terms of cleaning and then first you do most time you do a general clean get the dirt off and then you want to take your squeegee and a paper towel get any of those hard to reach areas because there's some dirt inside there too if you want to get the surface super super smooth you clay bar it or use that scratchless sponge then you generally finish with the degrease get inside the wheel wells bumpers all that kind of do that good stuff and then and this is for a later video you want to do a pre-inspection once the car is super clean and again I can't emphasize enough how important the cleaning process is if the car is super clean you're gonna have no issues during the install and especially down the line once the car is on the road if you skip any of these steps while cleaning or don't quite clean a recessed area or edge properly you're gonna run into lots of, source, lots of problems so again take your time on cleaning super important thanks for watching I'm Justin Pate